Hello everybody. So I'm going to walk you through a little presentation today about little discoveries that I made on my way to building this startup. So um, during the presentation you're going to learn more about me so I'm not going to introduce or share more details right now. So I want to start by um, asking you to imagine of having an idea that can bring a positive change into this world. My hope is that all of you have at least one or more of these ideas. These ideas don't need to be fully formulated yet, but having them is the start. And the journey from this idea to reality, which is the name of the presentation, is interesting, but it is mandatory because an idea is just that, unless we actually go on the journey to make it into a reality. It is mandatory if you want to take responsibility for your life, and to bring positive change into the world. <clears throat> For me, this journey has given me immeasurable rewards and lessons, and I'm going to start by sharing these lessons today. And as someone who was born and raised here, and I had the opportunity to study abroad as well, I can attest that uh, there truly is no better school than life and the journey to creation, creating things. And I don't want to get philosophical because what I'm going to share with you today is quite practical. But before I jump into all these practical little tips, I want to say that I personally have discovered, you know, we always question, like, what's the meaning of life, right? It's quite philosophical. For me, it's the journey of creation. You know, whatever it is that we have, whatever ideas that we have, it is our responsibility to bring them into the world. And that's how we express ourselves, and that's how we create change. So let's go to the first thing that I want to talk about is identifying your why. So this process, even though it's about creating companies, it actually uh, creates your identity in the process as well. And it is critical to understand the why behind our actions. Um, we're going to put in a lot of hard work when we go on this journey. And when we have a clear why, it becomes significantly easier to sort of dismiss all the hows and all the what's and all the challenges that come on the way and just kind of overcome them. And the obvious answer here, why, is always money, right? Like everybody wants to make a lot of money. And that's normal and that's what we all do. But money is a byproduct of your vision. It is not the reason why we should be doing things. It, it's a byproduct of what we believe and what we want to create. And your vision is going to be completely different than everybody else's, and that's okay, right? And I'm going to share mine now, just to give you some uh, sort of framework, right? I believe in bringing back the emotional equilibrium into schools, into elementary schools, because I believe that when we bring that back to students, by extension, we're bringing it into the society which creates our world. And when we have emotional equilibrium, that is the best foundation for having a good life and building on that. So for me, that's very important. And so what I decided to create is a company that introduces these concepts to elementary um, schools um, for their students. And I will show you at the end a little bit more about how we did that. So I invite you to think about your why. You know, I mean, it might not be clear right now, but it becomes clear the more you think about it, the more you find an attraction towards a certain idea. So, sort of like analyze it a little bit and see why and create your own vision. For some, this might be I want to create technologies to make the life of disabled people better, or I want to create uh, software to um, make something much faster, therefore saving time for people because time is very important. So it doesn't matter what it is, it, as long as you have one when you start the process. Then I'm going to move on to my favorite part. <clears throat> one, of my, one of my personal biggest pet peeves uh, is when people say, yeah, but I don't know how. Nobody knows how. You know, like literally nobody knows how. It doesn't matter how much research we do. We don't know how unless we actually start. So it is a very big misconception. So let me give you an example. I came up with this. So if I want to go from here to Limassol, and, you know, I need to, I'm the type that wants to control everything. So I'm going to do research. I'm going to check the weather. I'm going to 
see, you know, if there's traffic, I'm going to put it in the GPS, I'm going to have the route in front of me. But ultimately, I need to start driving, right? And when I start driving, there's going to be, it's a dynamic environment. Things are going to change. Maybe there's an accident, maybe there's traffic, maybe the weather changes. So it doesn't matter how much I do before, unless I actually start doing something, I'm not going to get anywhere. So don't ever expect that you need, to, you know, you have to know everything before you start. Just start with where you are, with the people you know, and just start building on that. It's, it's a trap if you wait until everything is in line, in place. Moving on to developing our incised muscle. And I call it a muscle because it's something that happens over time. It's different to be stubborn and it's different to learn how to insist. Um, so, you're going to discover, um, and you might have already discovered that, that this journey from idea to reality is designed to sort of like break you in a way, but not in a bad way. It's designed to test you to see if you really want to do, if you're the right person for this idea to come to life. So it's going to be very challenging. And unless you have the mindset that you are going to insist on this and you have a clear vision, your why, that we talked about before, it's going to be very difficult. More often than not, the answer is no. I personally heard, I don't know, sometimes I think it's 100, sometimes I think it's 80. I don't know how many no's I heard from investors to possible partners to just simply sharing the idea with uh, people that had no idea what I was talking about. And it's quite like weird to think about it now. It just never bothered me. Just next, next, next. I just kept talking and talking and talking until one person listened and one person believed in the idea and one person invested in the idea and then next thing we know we'll have a company ready to go to schools. So you have to understand that rejection by one investor, one partner, one teammate, it's, it doesn't mean your idea is not good. It just means it doesn't align with their vision. And it's okay because you want to collect the people that believe in what you want to do as well. Developing this, it's going to take time and, you know, a lot of no's. So be patient with yourself. And if you want to interrupt me and ask me anything while I talk, you can. Because I prefer that it's interactive, but I don't know if you're going to interrupt me. The next thing I want to talk about is people. This is very important to me. And this has proven to be the key for me um, during this journey. So here's our idea, and here's the end result. And there's a bridge in the middle, and there's a whole bunch of people holding this bridge up for you. You need to know who they are. So you need to be open to people and get to know them, create relationships, and not dismiss anyone in the process. You never know who is going to be that one person that takes you to the next step. You really don't know. Like for me, it was people that I've never imagined, people that I didn't know prior in my life. You know, we always expect that friends and family and, you know, all that is going to be our, you know, help us, you know, our network. That's not always true when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship. You've got to plug yourself in into this ecosystem, get to know everybody that is walking on the same path with you, and just kind of ask them for help. And they're going to help you because someone helped them, and that's how it works, right? Um, but here's a tricky thing. So from this breach, let's say that we have 100 people, 90% of them are getting paid to be there, and 10% are actually people that are aligned with you. you got to understand how to be kind of selective who you trust as well in the process. And the reason I say this is because not everybody is going to understand. When, when it comes to innovation, we usually talk about things out of the box, right? Something new, something that doesn't exist. And it's not always easy to um, bring this message to life, right? So it is essential to surround ourselves with these people that believe us and support us. These people give us honest feedback and constructive criticism. The difference between criticism and constructive criticism, there's people that are going to tell you a lot of negative things just to tell you negative things, either because they don't understand, they don't align with you, or they don't want to, um, they cannot do it. So it's a natural thing that we humans have as well, you know, depending where our vibration is, to kind of want to hold everybody back with us as well. 
So constructive criticism is when someone helps you in the process. They tell you, hmm, well, maybe, but what about this versus no? You know, no, that's, that's a stupid idea. That's, don't say that or I don't understand what you're talking about. They, instead, they ask you to clarify. They want to help you. They'll make that call for you. They'll connect you to the next person. They'll go out of their way to talk to you or give you their time. Um, so these are the people you want to have around you. And it's kind of tricky because when we first start this process, before we actually develop this muscle that I was telling, I was describing before, we're going to be very vulnerable because everything is new to us as well, right? And that's why it's very important to be selective with the people. When we're vulnerable and we have people that don't believe in us around us, it is very easy to be influenced. So pick your people. And these people can be people you know already. It could be your family, your friends. It could be people you don't know. It could be your classmates, your partners. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a select few. This is also um, an interesting thing that I also found on the way because I was quite resistant to feedback. And like everybody, when it's your idea, you treat it like it's your baby and you want to protect it and you don't like people telling you what to do with it. And... I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna share a story. I wasn't gonna share this, but I'm gonna share this story. When I first started this journey, I was, you know, we had a very boutique type of company doing quite something similar like what we're doing now, but it wasn't scalable. It didn't have the technology needed to go globally. And the partners, our stakeholders that now are with us, we met them at the time, and they flat out told me, you know, you're interesting. This is interesting, but you're going about it the wrong way. And I said, no, I'm going about it the right way. You know, it's, I was very sure of myself and my skills, even though I had just started. And they said, okay, we're going to keep our eye on you, and we'll come back next year because they're from the States. They said, when we come back next year, if you haven't made a million bucks, you want to talk to us? And I said, yeah, sure, but I'll be okay. And they came back next year, and I was ready to close the company because, like they said, it didn't make sense. It wasn't scalable. My margins were all wrong. I wasn't making the profit, even though I had traction. And uh, I sat down and I talked to them and they helped me close that and reopen the new company that now is in a position to actually be very, very profitable with the models that we built together. And I was resistant to that. But something else that I found out is that um, it is important to accept feedback from people you respect. And there's difference in that. Like I have a lot of good friends and I love them all. But all of them are on a very different journey than I am. You know, some are on the same, but some are not. I have to understand that when I hear feedback from people that have not walked down the same path, it's not always clear, it's not always good. It's like I am more prone to take your opinion if you're walking the same path as me and you know what I'm dealing with, right? And I admire who you are, and I admire what you are creating or what you believe in. So these are the people you need to listen to. And it's very easy to want to listen to, you know, people that we're close to, you know, um, our best friends sometimes or, you know, our family. But if they're not doing what we're doing, how can they possibly give us clear feedback? Right? So that was very important to me as well. Going to number seven, it is about showing up. And showing up can mean a lot of different things. For example, showing up could mean being here right now uh, in front of you talking, I showed up, right? Um, I show up in the present moment, I am accountable, I'm reliable, all these things. But it also means showing up at events, uh, like I joined this competition and ended up winning. Uh, showing up at meetings that I didn't want to go because it was cold or too hot, I showed up. And just kind of going against that natural instinct that you want to just stay home in bed because you already worked hard the day before. You can't do that. You have to every day replicate the process. And again, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a funny story. When that, um, before I even started this journey, before that first idea that closed down, before we created this new company, I was involved in other things, and those things failed. And I don't generally go out to lunch. I go out to dinner. But I went to lunch to this tavern in Macedonia, 
And I was thinking, okay, well, that didn't work immediately. Immediately, I was like, okay, what can I do now? Like, I didn't even, like, spend a day thinking, oh, you know, I failed, you know. Just moved on to the next thing. And I was thinking that. And I sat down to eat, and I look up, and there's a sign. And he said, you know, you have an idea, call us. So I said, okay, I'll call them. I, I barely had an idea at the time, barely. So I called, and they were not able. They said, okay, all right, makes kind of sense, but we're not the right people for you. Call these people. I called those people. They sent me a link. I applied. 11 o'clock at night, <coughs> rarely answer any question. Next thing I know, they accepted me in an incubator here in Nicosia. Don't know. Like, if it was now, they wouldn't. Now it's very strict. Like, back then, I literally just two questions. And um, I showed up. You know, I showed up in that moment when I had to make the call. I didn't bookmark it. And I didn't say, okay, I'm just, let me just get down the number. No, I was sitting there. It was very easy to make the call. It was very easy to talk to someone. And they pointed me to the next place. And that place pointed me to a link. And that created that opportunity. So it's the little things that we don't, we cannot dismiss on a daily basis, you know, that can make a difference. Because for me, that's all there was. The little decisions that I took in the spur of the moment type of situation. Next, we're going to talk about having clear goals. And this, of course, everybody knows. You don't need me to tell you that it's important to have a goal. Um, so, it's a way to keep ourselves focused um, on where we have to go because, like I said, there's going to be a lot of obstacles on the way, but if you have your goal, it's much easier to sort of wake up every day and have meaning in everything that you do. On all the little nonsense that you have to do every day, you know, those emails, uh, everything you have to do. <clears throat> describing what you want to do over and over and over again. You know, if you have your goal, it becomes much easier. And you don't need to, like, know 100% absolutely what that goal is. Just have, like, it's going to frame itself as you go. But something else that I found out is that it is important to have measurable goals. Just by saying, like, I want to be successful, that's not a goal. You know, by saying, like, I want to increase my income by 20%, that's a goal because I automatically know... I'm going to look for opportunities that give me that extra 20%, for example. So you've got to be very clear. And when it's clear to you, you're, it's going to become clear in your environment as well. And you're going to be able to pick up on the signs and all these opportunities that you have every day. So far, so good. Or am I talking too fast? It's okay? All right. So when we have these goals and we can measure them and we... It works both ways. It keeps us on track, but it also gives us that, that, that satisfaction every day <clears throat> that we have achieved something. And that builds our insist muscle. That builds our confidence. And these goals can be anything from today I'm going to take five hours and clarify my vision. I'm going to read everything. That's a goal. And tomorrow I'm going to write this executive summary or I'm going to start on this idea and analyze it and see what kind of revenue model I can create. It could be reading a lot about it or actually doing it, but just start putting it together. These are all little goals, you know, and you need that every day <clears throat> because it's going to make you feel better. It's going to make you believe yourself first, right? And then the taking action part, which again, you don't need me to tell you, um, we need to take action. After we've done all the research, after we've done down, put down our ideas and we created these executive summaries and our visions and our financial uh, projections and all that, we have to take some action. And um, <clears throat> embracing action means taking the necessary steps to bring this idea into fruition and means being proactive and making things happen. You have to make things happen. Nobody's going to make it for you. Nobody's going to make anything happen for you, you know, because that's another little trap because we live in a very close society here where people are, you know, they help. we help each other. We have our networks Nobody's going to build it for you or make it happen. You have to do it yourself. And by waiting for someone else to sort of help you in the process, it's not gonna, you're just going to waste your time. So you just got to do it. <clears throat> so going back to the story that I shared before with the tavern, I took action that day. Mm -hmm. I, just, I made that call, right? Now, I don't want you to think I'm crazy and I call all the numbers I see on the signs. Just walk down the street and I just call everybody to see. But what 
what happened that day is I was already thinking about this, right? I was already thinking, sitting there thinking about this idea, and then I look and I see a sign that tells me, do you have an idea? Call it. So it kind of made sense. So you're gonna, it's a gut instinct type of situation, right? You're going to know, you're going to be open, and you're going to know what, which of these opportunities you have to pick from your environment. It's going faster than I thought. But we're going to talk about the company more, and I'm going to take questions. And it's supposed to be 10, not 1, 0, sorry. And this is one of my favorite things um, that I've learned in the process, and it's very close to me, and I try to do this every day. It's being there for others. I'm going to read a little bit about this because I have it here. So the idea from going to idea to reality and achieving success, we need to understand that success is not a personal thing. It's a collective thing, right? It, everybody has to be successful for us to be successful. It's kind of weird, but let me walk you through it. So we need to learn how to support others and help others to achieve their goals in the process. When we do that, and everybody thrives around us, is by default we're going to thrive as well. Even if we fail and they succeed and they have a job opening, we have an opportunity there. Even, you know, a quote that I have here is, happiness is only real when shared. Because if, if you don't believe the same, then try, just try next time you get good news to not share them with anybody. Like, zero value. Zero value. Don't call your mom. Don't call your friends. Don't share. You win the lottery. Nobody knows. It's not as cool, you know. You get your grades up, nobody knows. It's not as cool. So you got to share happiness. you got to share this situation with other people, and you got to bring them up with you, and then you can all enjoy this great world together, right? And it is important to remember that we are in this journey together because if I want to be successful, that means I have to have a thriving economy around me and people that are willing to buy what I'm doing. So that means they have to be successful. All right, so I'm extending a bit further, but I'm talking about your network, right? We can all do something where we are. You can help your friends that, are, that won't help, not ever. You're not going to force people. But if someone comes to you and they need you because you're not, make time. Make time for these people. And it's a circle. They're going to make time for you, and then you just lift each other up. Just imagine this. Like, you just lift each other up, and together you just rise to the top. Um, so before I finish, and then we can talk more about the company, and I can answer questions, anything you guys want to know about my journey to create this startup, you know. Um, I'm going to say what it is a little bit more. I'm going to show you a little video, and then we'll go into discussion, right? I hope you have some questions. So what we have done with Heroes Made, um, we're in the educational technology sector at tech, and my team and myself created a SaaS platform, which is a software as a service similar to Netflix, for social-emotional learning. Social emotional learning is the, um, is the three words that describe the process of the humans acquiring five critical competencies. And these competencies are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, responsible decision-making, and relationship skills. I personally believe that this is the foundation for... That's good. It's learning young. So this is a foundation for everything that we want to, like if we want to succeed in life and we have this foundation, it becomes so much easier. So my idea was let's give this foundation to the kids. Now math and English and Greek and all that is all good, but that's academics. That's, you know, it doesn't give us the sort of like the stamina we need and the know-how and how to navigate the environment around us, right? So my idea, let's put into the schools, let's bring emotional equilibrium, let's help them develop self-awareness that's going to come into the society, into the world, and then we're creating a better world. So a bit utopian, but it can work. Give me 20 years. So let's see if this video plays. And it's just a small introduction, just so you can see how it looks like, because when I describe it, it might not sound 
might sound complex, but the whole idea was to make it so simple they can't tell us no. So is it gonna go? I haven't tried it before you guys came, so I don't know. Welcome to Heroes May. Okay, now what I have to do? Accept all. Welcome to Heroes Made. We have created the most direct way to teach social emotional learning in elementary schools. Until now, many teachers found it difficult to navigate social emotional learning tools. Over 60% of teachers stated that they don't have enough time to prepare for social emotional learning sessions and that they don't have access to a clean, streamlined curriculum. The good news is that over 80% of teachers report that they want to improve their ability to teach social emotional learning. We are introducing the Three Click Wonder platform. The only thing teachers have to do is log in, access the library, and pick a lesson. Our system requires zero prep from the teachers as it has pre and post session questions with every book. Teachers can also carry out an evaluation for every student and download the report whenever they want. Students get to customize their own avatars, report in their platform journal how they feel with just a click of a button, and then join the lesson for that day. Our goal is to provide students with a fun and effective experience, and to enable educators with tools to find themselves in harmonious and productive classrooms. To request a full demo or a meeting, click contact us. That's it. So... Welcome back to another live stream. I don't know what this is. And the stream, we're going to be doing more learning Noster. Um, if there you go. You guys want to hear that? I can put it back on. So that's it. So that's what we've done. And um, believe it or not, um, our value proposition, which is what you're doing different than everybody else that is trying to solve the same problem <clears throat> didn't become clear until after we actually launched and we were in schools and we were you know that's what i'm saying don't you don't have to have everything ready it became clear during this competition when i was sitting where you guys are sitting and someone was talking here about digital marketing and they said this one phrase that just made it very clear to me what i had to say to people and it is we are the most direct solution for this zero prep you don't have to do anything which is a big selling point for teachers because they're already very, very busy. And this is their way into schools for us. We promise them that they're going to save time and they're going to have everything ready and it works. And there's many tools for social emotional learning. They require printing, special training. It's very strenuous process. And that actually causes the schools not to do it, which results in more bullying and more issues in schools and all that. So by making it simple is the key. And that's what we've done. We didn't know we were doing that. We were just creating a tool. We had certain things in mind. Oh, it's going to be simple. We want it to be simple. But we didn't know that that was going to be our selling point, And it became our selling point in the process. So that's what I'm saying. Get started. If the first one fails, do it again. And in the process, you're going to discover so many things. As long as you join the process and you go to events, you take classes, you talk to people, pick your people, and everything we talked about today. Thank you. Let's talk if you guys want to talk. Anybody but you two? No? Yeah. No, we're in pilot mode in two schools, in uh, three actually, in Cyprus right now. And what we've done is uh, we have like 2,000 students in the system. And what we've done during the process, we've discovered we needed to do even more. Like we had certain issues with uh, the classes loading on time and we created extra ways around it. And it was a teaching a moment for us. And we're still doing this pilot, making correct corrections on the platform. And once we're, we close the pilot, which should be at the end of February, we're starting a pilot in the U.S. Because we're going to see, you know, we know how here they, you know, the teachers behave, you know, slightly different here than in the United States. We want to see if there's any other things we need to fix when we're in a bigger environment. And once we do that, hopefully second quarter of 2023, we're going to commercialization. Yeah. And then you had your hand up, but I don't know if you will still want to. Yeah. I have uh, two questions. Uh, if you could give us a Tell us a little bit more about the bullet five to choose the right people for you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, it has to start by allowing just about everybody that wants to be around you, around you, right? You have to be open and you have to talk to people and develop relationships. What I have found, it's part instinct as well, is that the people that I'm allowing around me are the people that have constructive criticism and not just criticism. And that's the key, you know? You don't want someone to say, no, that's a bad idea. You want someone to say, that's interesting. Can we make it better? So those are the people that you want to look for. And that's one indicator, right? And you generally, if you leave uh, from having a conversation with someone and you don't feel good, that's not a person you need to disclose information about what you want to build to again, you know, like find someone else that's going to make you um, sort of move forward, not take a step backwards. And that's the key for me. That was the key. There might be other ways too. Of course, if they're yelling at you, you don't want to talk to them. So, <laughs> yeah. And the second question is, if you could tell us uh, maybe uh, some things that help you build uh, this company, get it from the technical aspect. Like you have the idea, but mm -hmm. then you need to also get knowledge yeah, that's why I said people is important. Yeah, like I had the idea, but I am not a technology gal, right? I don't code. Um, so obviously I had a need for a co-founder that knows how to develop things. And through this phone call that I made and the incubator I ended up being and meeting people there, there was someone that was a good match and liked the idea and we developed a relationship and he's now my co-founder. And he built it, and then at the same time, I had sort of like in-house skill. My husband is the illustrator for the art in the books, so that kind of came easy. Um, and then when you're in the ecosystem, you will meet these people. You don't need to know everything. That's what I'm saying. You cannot possibly know everything. So you got to focus on the thing that you know. Like if you're in marketing, focus on that. If you're in the business side of things, focus on that. If you know how to develop technology, focus on that. And then find the other people that complement your skill and build a team. Because that's something else that happens here quite a bit, and I've seen it, is that um, people don't like to uh, share their company. They believe it's there. it's my company. You know, It's, it's not going to go far unless you literally are God and you know how to do everything. It's not going to happen. So you got to allow people to come in negotiate, give them some shares, or if you can afford to pay them, pay them. Like if you have funding right from the start, which is very hard to do without a team, because investors usually look at the people. They're not going to like a one-person show. They don't like that. They like a three-minimum person show, because two can be a tight, three works quite well, and then you add from there to sort of bring in all the departments that you need. Not all companies have the same needs. Now you can you might, you might need five people. I have seven right now on my team, so um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you gotta bring everybody else. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Does Evan Gold uh, plan to go up? It's about discipline, or it does they need to go somewhere? It's about both. Uh, like I said, <coughs> it's about showing up. It's about uh, when you're here, you're here. So you're engaged with me. So you show it up in the moment. You're not like dreaming and waiting to leave, you're asking me a question, you show it up. So you're taking advantage of the moment, you're creating a connection with me. When I see you outside, we might talk, I might end up being able to offer you something, you might be able to offer me something, right? This is showing up. Uh, being aware of your environment and um, not dismissing and waiting for the... It's one of the things I don't necessarily enjoy when people do is um, they're here, but they're thinking about being somewhere else. That's not polite, to, it's not respectful to the people around you, and it's not also good for you, ultimately. So that's one thing. The other thing is, yeah, you got to go to a lot of places you might not necessarily feel comfortable going, um, from classes to events to parties to network events to getting in front of people and talking to them. That's showing up, and um, it gets much, much easier. I could not talk to anyone five years ago. I didn't make sense. I tried. So I hope I made sense today. So both things. And you got to sort of go against yourself sometimes because you're not going to want to do these things. But you have to if you want to grow. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, my question would be uh, how important do you think is having a mentor? Very important. For me, it was 
the network of the mentors that I have around me because I had the passion and I had this insist my soul I would not give up for the life of me. Like I just wanted to create this. But things were not kind of falling together because I was missing certain things that come with experience that I didn't have. You know, I couldn't possibly have experience because one, my age, and two, I've been doing it only for so long. So my mentors now are part of the board as well. They now have become shareholders. And I also have some mentors that come in other forms, um, relationships that are created in the ecosystem. My mentors, I I would say that I would not be where I am now if it wasn't for them. That's as far, even though I'm very good at showing up and uh, picking people and doing all that stuff, if I didn't have them, because also of the industry that I'm involved in, it's not a sexy industry. Educational technology is not the first thing that on anybody's list for investments, right? It was and it is now. It's growing quite fast. So very important. If you can find mentors that are willing to give you their time, grab onto that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to know a little bit more about the investment journey, like how it went for you. Like okay. You funds, with private funds, personal funds, how, how did you put it together? Okay. To be able to pay the team as well. Yeah. The, um, it started, uh, the initial funds, which actually did not create anything that we used, but they were part of the experience, came from the incubator. They gave us a very small amount to create an MVP, which is the company we opened and closed. So that was kind of nothing for us. But it gave us, it gave me the experience of managing even that small amount of money to create something. So that was a very good lesson for me because I made mistakes. And then um, when we created the second company, we went the traditional route of seeking private funds. There were some grants available, but it's a very tedious process. Um, and uh, it's not good to depend. It's good to have them to complement, but not depend on those grants, right? So we went the private route. And we, oh gosh, I don't even know. We pitched. Like, I reached out. Like, I literally, I don't, there's no answer to this. I would get on my, at the start, I would get on my computer, and I would just do a random search, investors, EdTech, Cyprus, nothing. Greece, oh, there's a few. Let's email them. I emailed them, nothing. Kept doing this. Eventually, I got a reply. Let's hear what you have to say. Oh, it's a great idea. Do you have any sales? No, I don't have sales. I need money to create it. Okay, well, come back when you have sales. So it is like evil thing, catch 22, that you keep going round and around. In order for you to get attention, you have to have sales. But in order to get sales, you got to build it. And you just keep going in this loop. And that's where my mentors came in because I had this strong team of people around me. They introduced me to someone and they vouched for my personality and my stubbornness and my vision. And he flew here from uh, South Africa to meet with us, which was in the middle of COVID, you know, of all things, we, even harder. And we met, and I just shared my vision. And because he came through people that have mentored me during the way, and there was a trust already there, we came to an agreement that he would invest in the company in milestones. For example, he gave the first initial amount and we had deliverables, which means we had to build something. And once we delivered that and he was happy with that, he would release the, the rest of the funds. And that's how it went for us. But between, I made it quite short, but between this process, like I said, it was maybe 80 or 100 no's. Um, of course, I was working a lot in the middle of COVID, which was very hard because you didn't have that personal touch with people. You were hidden behind a screen. And, but yeah, that's. And then once, I don't know now, because now we're getting ready to race again for commercialization. And I hear that it's easier the second time. I'm not sure, because you already have something to show. You already have an investor that believed in you. It feels less risky for the next investor to come on board. Um, and that's how I afforded to pay for the team, because we have the, the funds from the investor. Yeah. Yeah. Which stage of development should you present your idea to an investor? 
Um, there is categories of investors. You have the angel investors, pre-seed. They don't need to see anything. They just need to hear your idea. They, they expect that you're going to have nothing to show. Then you have investors that are in the seat round. They want to see something. They understand you haven't commercialized yet, but they want to see something, right? And then you have series A, B, and C, which is for scaling. You already have traction, and you're going to raise the millions now to go globally. So there isn't a right time. The right time is as soon as you can. But before, just make sure you are as clear as you can. And there is a process. There is, um, For me, what I found is that by creating an executive summary, it's a set of 10 questions. If you can answer them well, you're ready to present to someone. If you want these 10 questions, let me know and I'll give them to you. So um, you don't have to have that. If you have an idea now, sit down tomorrow, formulate it, and you're ready to talk to angel investors. They don't expect that you're going to have a product. Yeah. Uh, also, you said that you do not give up, if I understand correctly. Yeah. So, do you believe that there is a time uh, where one must uh, sort of uh, get out of the seat before it uh, sinks? Only if they threaten you. Only if they threaten you. <laughs> no. Um, so, what I believe is that um, if you have a plan B, your plan A automatically weakens. So, you have to sort of go at it as if it's the thing that you are supposed to do, right? And um, the thing that's going to happen in the process is you're going to pivot and you're going to change, right? So that's the change that you should accept, not the no. You should accept that things are going to change on the way and they might change perhaps a little bit what your product is going to look like. Um, maybe you find that people don't understand what you're doing, so you have to explain it different or change certain functions and features, which is what is happening to us, you know? But no, it shouldn't be an answer. So don't think about this insist muscle is not particular to the idea, but to the process. Does it make sense? Uh, commit to the process. Be willing to change the idea. Okay. Yeah. So it's a more like general thing. Yeah. Than yeah, don't get down on yourself. Don't quit. Just keep going. And if you need to pivot and change your idea or even build an entirely new product, that's what you're going to do. All right? You're welcome. Yeah. Um, what I can do is, Joanna here can give my email to you, and I can email them to you. Is that okay? I mean, there, these questions usually are, give me a brief description of what this company is going to be about. You should be able to do it very clearly in four lines, you know, like just explain it. Um, then it's what is what, is, what are you doing differently than everybody else that's doing this? Because whatever it is that you think about, there's definitely someone else that's trying to solve a, the same problem, and there's room for everybody, right? Don't get discouraged if you have competition. Competition only validates the fact that your solution is needed. That means there's other people that have recognized that there is this problem, and they're all trying to solve it, and you can be part of the solution. You don't need the monopoly. That is a risky, very risky environment to be in. That means nobody knows that there's a problem. Right. Um, the next question is um, uh, features and of your product, your mission, your vision. What, how are you going to monetize it? Uh, are you going to be selling units, subscriptions? Is it a B two C market or B two B? Are you selling to businesses or are you selling to clients? Um, other things include uh, competitive analysis, uh, mar industry research. So you need to know if you're in the ad tech industry, how much is it growing per year? That's important because it's indicative to the investor. If I invest this much and this goes the way it's supposed to go, I'm going to make 20 or 30% a year, for example, right, if it's growing that much. It's only an indicative fact. You don't want to invest money in an industry that's – you can still make money, but it's more risky for them, Right. So you need to know that if you're in a niche, go into your niche and find out, yeah, I'm in the tech industry, but I don't do math. I do social emotional learning. How much is that thing growing now? It's growing 40% a year. That's huge. You know, so I mean, by chance, I happened, I mean, I started five years ago. It wasn't a thing. Now it's a thing and it's growing quite fast. So it's great timing. Um, did I cover the 10? Your team members, you know, who are they? You know, so you got to write a compelling little bio about why you're the right person or what made you think of this. If you have any credentials, include them. And do the same for every person that's going to join you on this venture, which is going to be your team. 
Um, and that's that's the base of it. There might be a couple other questions I cannot think right now, but if you want them, she will give you my email and I'll forward you the template. Yeah. That's a way to do it. For me, it happened uh, more organically. My, um, I have a daughter, and when she was uh, four years old or five, she was bullied in school. And I didn't um, like that, of course. And she went to, you know, from wanting to go to school, she's very happy usually, to not wanting to go to school. Um, and that made me think, okay, I need to solve this, and I cannot be with her every day, so how can I solve this? How the school doesn't do anything about this? So... The first idea was to create books only for her. And that's what we did. Like, he illustrated the book. I wrote the book. It's not a very good book now that we know how to do it better. And uh, she was in the story because we met her, the little princess in the story, the main character. So she saw herself, like, sort of, like, standing up to this bully throughout the story. And she understood the message much easier. So I said, okay, that's a way for kids to get to get it, you know, to get the message, to connect to the message, customization. And then people started wanting copies of the same book, but they wanted their kid to be in the book, which we manually did. And then I said, let's do the first company. Well, I thought it would be the only company, which was customizing books B2C and printing them and sending them. Margins were all wrong. The idea was good, but it didn't make sense the way I built it. And then they picked me up and mentors helped me and we reshaped it. So it came from a personal something that I dealt with. And usually you'll find that with a lot of people, it does come from a personal issue that you had and you couldn't find an easy solution out there to um, fix your problem. However, if you don't have a personal problem, which hopefully you don't, that you're dealing with, and you love a particular industry, you can do research and see what are the main problems in that industry and what is being done to solve them. Quora is a great place, you know, to start, yeah. That's it. Thank you, everybody. And if you want my information or any help, you can connect with me through Joanna.